1.6 practice problems. The complete photoelectron spectrum of an element is given above. Which of the following electron configurations is consistent with this spectrum? So important thing to note about uh, photoelectron spectrums is that uh, the x-axis here is reversed from what we typically see with numbers. So our largest number is in the bottom left-hand corner, and then we uh, progressively get smaller. The nucleus is in this axis here, and so the electrons that are closest to uh, the nucleus are going to be my 1s electrons. And then the thing to note is that the spikes are uh, proportional to how many electrons are actually within that, uh, that energy level and those sublevels. So we have 1s, then we have 2s, then 2p, 3s, and 3p. And again, these are proportional, so you can see 1, 2. So I have uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s1, 2, and 3p1, 2, 3. And then I just need to go ahead and match what I've identified here with the uh, electron configurations that are offered. So I can see that my last um, thing is going to be 3p3. And so I can go ahead and eliminate everything other than option B, which matches my uh, electron configuration that I predicted perfectly. The complete photoelectron spectrum for an element is shown above. Which of the following observations would provide evidence that the spectrum is consistent with the atomic model of the element? So again, we have our uh, nucleus here, and so this is going to be uh, my 1s, and then this is going to be 2s. I can see that my 1s block is filled, however my 2s block is not. I only have one electron here. So I can see that I have uh, just one electron in my valence shell, and so uh, we're going to um, go ahead and check to see um, what my options are. So A says a neutral atom of the element contains exactly two electrons. Uh, this is not true. This is two and then one. So we have three electrons here. So A is not correct. B states the element does not react with other elements to form compounds. Um, that wouldn't really be super evidently shown by the uh, photoelectron uh, spectrum. However, you can see that this element's most likely going to be pretty reactive since we have this one valence electron here. So that doesn't look good for us. And then uh, C says in its compounds, the elements tend to form ions with a plus one charge. That's stating that we are just going to be losing our valence electron here, that 2s1 electron. That sounds good. D says in its compounds, elements tend to form ions with a plus three charge. That would mean that it would have to lose all of its electrons. That's incredibly unlikely um, and would be very, very difficult to do. So option uh, C, where we have a plus one charge where we're just losing that valence electron is going to be our best choice there. The photoelectron spectrum for the element nitrogen is represented above. Which of the following best explains how the spectrum is consistent with the electron shell model of the atom? So again, this bottom left-hand corner, this is where my nucleus is going to be. And um, all of my uh, spikes are going to be proportional and uh, my valence electrons are going to be as far away from the nucleus as possible. So we have our 1s, then we have 2s here, and then we have 2p here. And they are proportional, so I have 1, 2, so 1s2, and then 2s2, and then 2p3. And then I can go ahead and read through my answer choices to see um, what best matches what I'm seeing there. The leftmost peak represents my valence electrons. This is exactly the opposite of what we were saying. Again, my nucleus is in this bottom left-hand corner. My valence electrons are um, far away to the right. The two peaks at the right represent the, a total of three electrons. Nope, I have two and then three, so we have a total of five electrons for my valence, so no. The electrons in the 1s subshell have the smallest binding energy. Again, uh, my nucleus is here and our x-axis is kind of reversed in terms of how we normally see 
uh, those values are presented. And so we have our highest bi binding energy with the electrons that are closest to the nucleus. So no. And then we have option D, which says the electrons in the 2p sublevel have the smallest binding energy. And uh, we see 2s and then 2p just right after it. And it is closest to the binding energy of zero. And so that is going to be our best answer choice. A sample containing atoms of carbon and fluorine is analyzed using X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. The portion of the spectrum shown, uh, showing the 1s peaks for the atoms of the two elements is shown opposite. <clears throat> which of the following correctly identifies the 1s peak for the fluorine atom and which uh, provides an appropriate explanation? <clears throat> so. Um, we need to differentiate between fluorine and carbon in terms of their binding energies for their 1s electrons. They are going to be different because we have a different number of protons, um, and therefore those uh, innermost electrons, those 1s electrons, are going to be pulled in closer to our nucleus when we have more protons. So carbon is going to have a grand total of six protons, and fluorine is going to have a grand total of nine. We're pulling in those electrons closer to our nucleus. Again, our nucleus is going to be uh, approximately here um, in terms of like just showing uh, generally where uh, relative spacing would be. So we have our nucleus here and we see that our 1s electrons for peak X are much closer than our 1s electrons for peak Y. And um, that would be uh, corresponding to fluorine having uh, more protons and therefore having a higher effective nuclear charge. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, see what our answer choices are. A states that uh, peak X is fluorine. Oh, sorry. We've identified that peak X is going to be fluorine, so we can go ahead and get rid of um, option choices C and D since it identifies peak Y as our fluorine, and we know that that is not the case. So just looking between A and B. So A states peak X because fluorine has a smaller first ionization energy than carbon. That is actively not true. It is going to be much harder to steal uh, electrons off of fluorine than it will be to steal them off of carbon. Again, it has a higher effective nuclear charge. Those electrons are very attracted to that nucleus and they are going to be very difficult to steal. And then uh, option B says peak X because fluorine has a greater effective nuclear charge than carbon does. Uh, that is going to be um, our answer choice. Again, it matches the predicted answer that we uh, made and uh, follows through with all the logic. The photoelectron spectrum of the 1s electrons for two isoelectric species, calcium with a charge of 2 plus and argon, are shown opposite. Which of the following correctly identifies the species associated with peak X and provides a valid justification? So again, our nucleus is going to be kind of here at our um, access point, and we are trying to identify between these two, uh, which is going to be calcium with a charge of two plus and which is going to be argon. Now, the thing to note here is that we say two isoelectric species. This means that we have the same number of total electrons between both of these. So my differentiating factor is not the number of electrons, but again, my number of protons. So calcium is going to have a grand total of 20 protons, whereas argon is only going to have 18. Since um, argon is going to have less total protons to bring in those electrons closer to its nucleus, um, that is going to uh, be the uh, spike unidentified here, the one that we are not interested in. So this spike X is going to be that of calcium with a charge of two plus. So we can go ahead and eliminate answer choices A and B. Uh, which identify the X spike as argon. And we are uh, going to go ahead and try to find the answer choice that says that it is because we have more protons here, therefore pulling those electrons in closer to the nucleus. 
Option C states that calcium 2 plus has a greater nuclear mass. Uh, mass is not the thing that I'm interested in. My mass is not going to affect my um, overall uh, binding energies of those electrons. Instead, I am being affected by uh, Coulombic law, not by gravitational law. I don't really care about the mass. The thing that I care about is my uh, attraction between charges. Answer D states uh, calcium 2 plus because its nucleus has two more protons than the nucleus of argon. That is going to be correct. Again, it matches the predicted answer that we gave and uh, its logic holds true. The photoelectron spectra opposite shows the energy required to move, remove a 1s electron from a nitrogen atom and from an oxygen atom. Which of the following statements best accounts for the peak in the upper spectrum being to the right of the peak of the lower spectrum? So why is it easier for me to remove the 1s electron from the nitrogen than it is for me to remove it from oxygen? So again, the thing that's going to uh, form our overall uh, binding energies is going to be my number of protons. So we can see that oxygen has a grand total of eight protons, whereas nitrogen has seven. And since I have more protons for my oxygen, I'm able to get those 1s electrons, those innermost electrons pulled into the nucleus um, a lot closer. And uh, that is going to be why it's harder to uh, steal from oxygen than it is from nitrogen. So looking at my options here, A states nitrogen atoms have a half-filled P sublevel. So, um, cool, not what I'm asking about. I am specifically asking about those 1s electrons only, so my uh, valence electrons are not the thing that I'm looking at. My overall uh, valence and electron configuration is not the thing that I'm caring about. I'm only caring about those innermost electrons, those 1s electrons. B states that there are more electron-electron repulsions in an oxygen atom than within nitrogen atoms. Again, we are only dealing with the 1s electron and we are asking why is it harder to steal oxygen's 1s electrons than it is to steal nitrogen's. This is not going to uh, come into effect here. C states the electrons in the P subshell of oxygen atoms provide more of a shielding than the electrons in the P subshell for nitrogen. Again, we have broken past those valence electrons and we are dealing with the core electrons, those innermost electrons. Uh, and we are asking why is it harder to steal from oxygen than it is from nitrogen? And option D states that nitrogen atoms have a smaller nuclear charge than oxygen atoms, stating that nitrogen has less protons to hold on to those innermost electrons, and that's why uh, they have a smaller binding energy is going to be my best answer choice.